Okay, let's knuckle down now. The tournament is tomorrow, so I have to put the serious head on. Doesn't mean we're going to win anything, but I have to put a serious head on, put proper calculation in, no arty business now, nothing out of the box, nothing new, nothing quirky. Let's keep it straight down the line, simple and straightforward, as we would do using the answer process. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically. Going to take the knight. Want to bring the bishop out so that we can go on castle. Do I actually just support the pawn? If I was going basic, playing over the board, I'll just bring the bishop here and act it as a pawn. Just making sure that everything's safe. In our practices, we've been bringing the bishop here, attacking the pawn, etc. So we're going to go on castle because that's our mainstay thing. But the idea is to give the king some company. Because as you can see, the king is home alone. It's got the rook, but the rook's wanting to come out here. So we're going to have to find a way of getting the queen and the bishops, giving the king some company. So bringing the queen here, attacking the g pawn. Seeing as the bishop has come off of that line, we can actually come and attack the g pawn. Maybe then get the bishop out depending on, could attack the queen, knight comes to defend, or the queen just comes to attack, but it seems more productive, I think, just bringing the bishop and attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece. So obviously, listen to me talking, thinking, oh, yeah, he's, he's got it all sewn up. I haven't. I'm just going for logical manoeuvres. So they've pushed the pawn. Bit of space in front of the king. Knight's not developed, so it's still stuck on the back. So it's a positive. Can't go here because the knight is there. Can't necessarily go here because basically it's just going to get trapped in a way. So bringing it back and attacking their bishop opens up the rook to start attacking towards the king area. That's the seriousness about this position. So I'm going to attack the bishop. They may be thinking about getting their undouble pawns back in line. So they may just go back. Yep, so they have done. So a knee-jerk reaction would be to just take, because I'm not too bothered about them bringing the pawns back in line, because we have a bit of disturbance around their king. How do we get there? It looks doable to me. So I'm going to take the bishop off the board. They re realign their pawns. Queen can come here with a check on the king. Obviously, it's going to be then an exchange of the queens. So I'm just going to pop the queen in here and just take. So the knight takes. And what else do we have now? We could look to start pushing the pawns up or just simply develop the knight. So I'm simply developing the knight, just keeping it all tight as best possible. Basic chess. Okay, so the knight's got no protection on. Knight could come here to attack this pawn, but the um, rook is protecting. Knight could come here to come here to come there. Seems a bit long-winded, but it's a, it's a move. I think we're going to go with that. I think they're probably going to champion this area here, but we've got a pawn that can take. So if we get the knight here, it's going to be a bit of a trouble, you know, jumping around a little bit but they'll probably see that and just drop the pawn down. So it's one of these. Oh, it's gone the other way. All right, so this invites the knight, but I don't think the knight's going to come. It's going to take. So it's opening up space in front of our king. So I'm going to take simply. It still gives us time, I think, to jump here with the knight to get to this position. So I'm going to take with a check get the knight here looking for this magic square maybe getting the rooks owning this file because rooks like to own the files don't want to play around with that one we are attacking their pawn so probably they're going to just come here but that makes it worse for them because we get a fork so maybe he comes with this rook we can still jump the knight there and attack the rook but then he comes down where do we go block the pawn maybe So there's a host of, yeah, so they've gone with that one. So do we waste time jumping there just yet? Or do we bring the rook here? I'm going to bring the rook here first. Try and own this file. 
This bishop's chomping at the bit, wants to get into action. This rook's probably looking to come here to target this pawn. And not forget, if he push this pawn, the bishop can tear because the rook has got the x-ray. So that's a little cheapy that I can see them probably working on. We're going for our cheapy here. Obviously, it's easily defended. You can bring the knight down, then it will be pre protecting this pawn. So going to attack the rook, like we said. It's opened up the bishop, like we've said. It's wanting to get this, basically. So this rook's going to attack the knight. Does the picture change once they come there? We said we were coming here. If he goes there. Ooh. So we can attack the rook and attack the pawn at the same time. So we're going to do that. If they take, we take. Still owning the file. Okay, so we're still owning the file. Feeling, ooh. But he comes here, doesn't he? But if he goes there, we can go here with the knight with a check. Take, king comes down, then we're trying to mash up them. Yeah, so we're going to have to go for this and take. He's got a pawn majority on this side here. We are attacking this pawn, so his king's probably coming here. If he does do that, we can come here, get a fork, and he has done. So get a fork, can get this pawn. But he still does have a poor majority on this side, so we have to be mindful of that. And also the knight could get trapped, maybe. Okay, and they're off. So this pawn pushes down, then he gets the knight. But we can get the bishop off the board, so we're going to put a fork on. And take and try and get the king across if we can. Or do we push the pawns? Push this pawn because it's going to take a while. Let's push. If he's coming down for our pawn somehow with these and these, we can push, push, push. I don't think we're fast enough. Goes there. Goes there. We go here. He goes there. And then we go there. And then he takes. Shall we hang fire on that? I think I'm going to hang fire on it. Because I don't have anything else to support the pawn. So I'm going to bring the king across. This, Yeah, so he's going for the pawn. So I'll bring the king up. So if we support, then he takes. Then we take. Then his king goes around the back. So he won't be able to take the pawn. He won't be able to take this back pawn. If he does, then we get a promotion. And they've just realized. Excellent. Okay, so can we start moving the king across? Yeah, I think we can. Um, let's see, how do we want to play this? If he drops, drops, drops. Okay, let's push this pawn. So he's looking to do this. We can then push up. Delicate operation, but I think it should be okay for us now. Unless, of course, there's some magic that I've missed. And we've still played this a little bit quick as well, really. I haven't taken much time over the uh, manoeuvres. So he's locked down. Didn't expect that, actually. Um, so we could hit the pawn here. And this might just be a long, drawn-out process, might it, of just hitting the pawn. Takes, 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 takes. So we eventually try and get rid of the pawns on his side because his king can't come and support. Well, it can. It could come back. So that's one down. 
it's going to do this move, isn't he, obviously. So if we pushed here, he pushes down, then we go here. Or if he pushes, we go here. Yeah, so they've done that. So we can push the pawn up. It's good practice for the end game as well. So I'm, I'm kind of glad they've continued. But at some point, they've got to realise that there's nothing left. He's got pawn. Yes, exactly. So they've resigned. Uh, nice game.